Society's Foundation podcast. My name is Joe McKinney, and today I am joined by David Orban, founder and managing partner of Network Society Ventures, mentor of the Teal Fellowship, and faculty and advisor for Singularity University. How are you doing today, David? Hello, and thank you very much for having me on the show. Excellent. Well, uh, David, you focus a lot on exponential technologies in singularity and decentralization. So for my viewers that don't know, can you please just give a brief explanation of exponential tech and the singularity? Uh, we are all very familiar with the power of computers increasing year after year. Uh, Gordon Moore, 50 years ago, formulated what it is not a, a, a law of nature, is a self-fulfilling prophecy instead, where thousands of engineers all over the world uh, work to make our chips and the computers that we build with them better and better. And their power, rather than increasing uh, in a series like one, two, three, four, actually it goes on doubling roughly every two years, like one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, and so on. So uh, after 30 steps, rather than being 30 times better, we end up with systems that actually are a billion times better. And that is what we have today in our pockets, supercomputers we call smartphones and uh, the global uh, globally interconnected uh, network we call the internet uh, that uh, also uh, um, uh, arose from, from exponential technologies. But their power today is also disrupting many, many other fields. Uh, if uh, uh, genome sequencing uh, of a single human genome took 15 years and $3 billion, uh, and it was a, a, an enormous effort uh, concluded in the year 2000, uh, today, after a little more than 15 years later, we can do the same in two weeks for $2,000 in many, many other fields. Um, uh, the uh, power of solar uh, photovoltaics, uh, the uh, capacity of electric batteries, uh, the um, uh, power of uh, our uh, network's speeds and capacities. Uh, all these and many other uh, fields are now uh, visibly impacted and transformed by, by exponential technologies. Um, your second question was regarding the singularity. Uh, more specifically, I assume, the technological singularity. In mathematics, uh, singularity is where a function has a discontinuity. Uh, in uh, physics, uh, singularity is where the laws of physics uh, break down, um, typically uh, referred to a black hole behind the event horizon. And uh, in technology, the technological singularity is assumed to be a point in, in the future uh, where uh, due to the uh, effect of artificial intelligence that is self-improving, the uh, radical transformation of technology and as a consequence of society uh, uh, may be impossible to, to predict. Uh, its dynamic, uh, its changes, uh, uh, its effects uh, on, on, on hum humans, humanity, and our societies uh, may become uh, too uh, difficult to, to model. There are many, many different uh, uh, ways of interpreting this uh, possibility from those who say it's never going to happen to those who say it is right around the corner in a little more than 20, 25 years. That is what we are going to experience. Um, now, at uh, Singularity University, we analyze and teach the uh, radical effects of exponential technologies uh, and uh, represent the, uh, the opportunities uh, that uh, they uh, embody. Uh, we do not uh, necessarily concentrate on the farther out consequences. We like to give tools to, to our um, uh, to, to our alumni that they can use from now to 10 years uh, in order to radically improve uh, their lives and, and uh, uh, the lives of uh, those participating in their communities. OK, very excellent in-depth uh, uh, explanation there. Um, so, we, so at Startup Society, we talk a lot about the policies that 
further essential goals and experimentation, what are some policies that startup societies or states in general can adopt to accelerate the singularity? Well, uh, certainly um, uh, policy making itself uh, is a technology. Uh, just like finance or security or many other fields that uh, at, at the first uh, glance we would not categorize as a technology. But if you think about it, uh, when uh, the first joint stock companies were created to finance uh, the uh, uh, very risky um, um, uh, trips uh, through uh, the colonies to bring back uh, spices and exotic uh, products uh, with with ships that uh, that uh, were uh, likely uh, to to go under uh, that kind of uh, uh, new thinking uh, to 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 finance these expeditions was itself an innovation that uh, spread and was uh, adopted by by more and more people. So, um, regulatory frameworks and, and, and policies can certainly uh, foster or hinder uh, technological innovation. And uh, I uh, firmly believe that uh, technological innovation uh, is itself a positive sum game. It is not about me winning and you losing. We all gain uh, with the um, improvement of technology and with the spreading of new tools uh, among human uh, civilization. So um, whether the technological singularity is a desirable outcome is still definitely under debate. Uh, there are people who are afraid that uh, unenhanced humans will not find role in, in, in a society that is dominated by the presence of artificial intelligences um, and and certainly in a similar manner uh, that uh, uh, today sees it difficult for somebody who cannot read and write uh, to have uh, economic value in in uh, modern societies uh, it is conceivable that it is going to be essential for having economic value in a future society where AI is present to work together with AI and to be able to do so uh, usefully, uh, constantly updating our understanding of, of what it itself means. So if, if we believe that is the case and that uh, humans will be able to thrive together with artificial intelligences uh, in, in this future society, then we need to plan ahead. Um, uh, being able to uh, to to forecast to um, uh, to model future scenarios is definitely one of the uh, distinguishing features of of being human, and as a consequence, it is crucial in this historical moment to dedicate the resources that are necessary in order to understand what uh, the outcome on the of this extremely powerful tool is going to be. And and we are we are seeing that uh, happening uh, in uh, in ways and and uh, in in terms of uh, the global uh, resources available that many see are still insufficient, uh, but we are seeing that emerging. Whether it is the uh, future of Humanity Institute in in Oxford or whether it is the future of uh, Life Institute at uh, MIT or whether it is open AI uh, in the valley, uh, these are all centers of uh, inquiry, of research uh, and experimentation that uh, uh, are, are trying to understand what the hell is going to happen. Interesting. So uh, with Singularity University often conflates uh, exponential tech with the centralization. But I've heard a couple of arguments that perhaps AI would actually not be uh, a decentralizing factor, but potentially it is a centralizing factor, a dictatorship of the AI, a true technocracy. Do you think that's a, a likely scenario? Um, so uh, we can also see today um, some uh, developments that uh, appear to counter the argument that technology is 
democratizing. Um, and uh, if you look at the power that Google uh, has on search and online advertising or the power of Facebook uh, in uh, social networks, um, certainly it would appear that uh, we are looking at uh, centralization. And if that is the case already uh, with uh, relatively primitive uh, technologies, um, we could infer that with more advanced technologies, it is going to be even more the case. I believe that um, when we look at Google and Facebook and other uh, platforms, um, their power is actually temporary and that uh, uh, we will go fairly quickly beyond uh, and uh, we will build uh, platforms and networks uh, that do not depend on a single point of failure uh, in delivering their, their services. And artificial intelligence, uh, in my opinion, is going to be uh, the same, um, not only in terms of, of development, uh, but in terms of delivering its power uh, in uh, uh, applying uh, the cognitive transformation of our world with inquiry that is going to um, look in niches uh, that won't be left unexplored, uh, it will not conform uh, to a given set of strategies and tactics, uh, but it will, uh, together with our own curiosity and creativity, uh, um, explore the world uh, in, in every possible direction. So going off of the idea of exploration and, and, and being entrepreneurial to possibly democratize and break down centralization, we're going to need a lot of risk takers in the future. Do you see that there's a positive correlation between technology and risk taking? Um, when you were a caveman and uh, um, went out too far uh, in search of a prey to bring back to the cave uh, to uh, feed or complement your hunter uh, or, or gatherer, rather, uh, uh, nutrition, uh, that was extremely risky. Um, the cost of the risk that you took was possibly your life and uh, the lives of those that uh, were dependent on you succeeding uh, to bring back that prey. Um, up to even uh, something like two, three hundred years ago, um, if you wanted to uh, open a tavern and uh, you didn't have all the money to start, went into debt and then the tavern didn't work out and you needed to close it, you ended up in debtor's prison. And very likely your family wouldn't have any other means to support itself. It would uh, end up in abject poverty and after one, two, or three, or five, or ten years, if you survived debtor's prison, uh, you would come out and, and be completely poor yourself. Uh, and by the way, most likely you would not survive debtor's prison either. So, um, today, society, um, through mm, fairly simple um, uh, rules and, 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 and agreements, um, simple for us who uh, live them, but almost unconceivable for anybody uh, coming beyond, be before uh, they, they became possible, uh, took away a lot of the risk. Um, we can afford uh, to have uh, just two, three children rather than six, eight, because the risk of not biologically promoting our genes uh, through those two, three children dying uh, has been taken away by better health care. And we don't need six, eight children out of which uh, uh, four, six would die in order to have the couple that will. Uh, that will uh, um, bring our genes to the next generation. Um, similarly, we can afford uh, to study, to study um, 
eight years, 10 years, 12 years, whatever it takes. Actually, today's society is telling people of 40, 50 years old that they should study. Lifelong learning is now uh, a, a positive uh, message rather than a wasteful um, use of, of, of precious time. And the reason we can afford to do that is because food is uh, inexpensive. Uh, we can feed our children, we can feed the adults. Uh, and uh, similarly, uh, going further in, in, uh, in the chain, in the, in the economic value chain, something like a bankruptcy law uh, made it possible uh, to experiment very widely with what makes sense. I have an idea and I want to see whether I find uh, people who like the idea. And I go from uh, theoretical to practical implementation to trying to sell the product or the service that is born out of the idea. And if it doesn't work, that's fine. Society will forgive me the debts that I accrued uh, in, in testing whether that idea made sense. So uh, the dynamic of, of uh, risk taking from prehistoric times to today has tended to way towards society progressively lowering the risk uh, and technology supporting um, further uh, risk taking. And I expect that to, to additionally increase uh, with uh, the cost of uh, a startup being lower and lower with uh, the reward of um, experimentation being higher and higher, both for individuals and for groups of individuals. Excellent. And, and to tie it together, so, so you're saying that the increase in technology makes it e um, easier to take more and more risk, especially with traditional startups. But do you think that applies to a startup society? Well, well normally it, it, it takes a lot of risk and a lot of costs and resources to build a new new city or new country. Do you think that exponential technology will lower the risk and cost of a startup society to the point where it will be a viable or even a necessary step in the future? In the past, uh, when people chose to leave for the colonies, uh, it wasn't an easy decision. It was a one-way ticket to hell most of the time. Uh, the life expectancy uh, in the uh, uh, Western uh, Indies or the Eastern Indies uh, in, in the Americas uh, uh, was uh, really, really uh, low. Uh, the, the quality of life, uh, uh, the, the, the rules uh, of the society at the beginning were uh, pretty savage. Uh, compared to to what was um, established uh, uh, back uh, back at home, um, so the question is uh, in the uh, opportunity of experimenting with the different kinds of uh, uh, societies, whether today the technological basis is there uh, to uh, make this kind of choice feasible for a much larger number of people than those who are reckless or desperate enough uh, to, uh, to take it like it happened in the past. And it feels like we are maybe there. Uh, there are a lot of uh, projects that are trying to put together what is the uh, minimum set of technologies to bootstrap a, a society and how uh, we can um, manipulate those minimum sets of technologies so that very nimbly uh, they can be packaged and then unpacked and, and booted up. And this can uh, be uh, extremely interesting and, and, and useful in many different uh, uh, ways and, and, and many different uh, environments. Uh, but uh, from my point of view, what is uh, absolutely fascinating is that in some sense, it is uh, just an experimentation for um, off-Earth colonies where the capacity of packaging, unpacking, and rapidly booting up 
an advanced technological society will be an essential requirement without which we wouldn't be able to establish those beachheads of uh, uh, human or human AI uh, societies uh, out of uh, planet Earth. That's incredibly interesting, the idea of creating a formula or experimenting with a formula so we could franchise it out in space. Wow, well, this conversation has been informative and engaging. Uh, Mr. Orban, David, thank you so much for coming on. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us at the Strap Society's podcast. Join us again for more excellent content like this. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.